Hi everyone, welcome to Let's Celebrate TV Live. I'm your host, Peter Lee. With me today, as always, is the guy who makes it all happen. He's the cameraman, the producer, the director, and he's also my husband, Phil Gordimer. And head cook and bottle washer. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you're watching us from, whether it's live or in replay. And for those in America, happy Thanksgiving coming up. So yes, today our topic is all about surviving Thanksgiving. And I know you're seeing Christmas stuff behind me, but we like to get started early here at LG Manor, so bear with us. But we do celebrate Thanksgiving, and um, that's what it's all about today. But first, a cocktail. Today, we're making a cranberry whiskey sour, and I think this may help some of you survive your Thanksgivings with your family. We're going to start with whiskey. I'm using Jack Daniels today because we want a strong whiskey. Now in our recipe testing for this, we tried several different ones. We've tried some rye, we've tried blended whiskeys. Nothing stood up to the cranberry and lemon as much as Jack Daniels did, and that's what we want. We need four ounces, 120 mils. Actually, let me put on my glasses so I can see what I'm doing here, or I make it a little more than four ounces. That wouldn't be fun. Well, it might be fun for you. All right, right in. Into our glass. Next is cranberry. You can't have a cranberry whiskey sour without cranberry. And I have it all measured out here. Four ounces, 120 mils, same amount. Next is simple syrup. I need uh, ounce and a half, 45 mils. I am using, yes, store-bought simple syrup today. I always keep this on hand just in case I don't have time or I forget to make my own. And really, this is fine. It's very shelf-stable. I used to always say, why would anyone buy simple syrup? And then I bought it one time and it just made things faster and easier. We're going to need lemon juice in this. It's a whiskey sour, so we need same amount of lemon juice as simple syrup. Ounce and a half, 45 mils, and that's going to be almost the juice of a whole lemon. I'm not going to measure it this time. Normally I would measure it out, but I'm just going to just go for it. There's one. This should do it. And if it's a little extra sour, that's okay. Next ingredient is what makes it frothy and lovely. And I know some of you may be upset about this, but it'll be fine. One egg white. And don't worry. You're not going to get sick. You're not going to get salmonella. It's maybe a chance of what, dear, one in every 100,000 eggs or something that might have salmonella. Yeah, but the alcohol is going to kill any right. germs anyway. So. Yeah. And then I'm just going to put in a dash of grenadine. That's not going to do anything to the flavor, but it's going to bump up the color a little bit because I want this really red and festive. Now we're going to dry shake this, meaning there's no ice in my cocktail shaker. Why am I dry shaking? I'm doing that because that's going to help the egg white emulsify with the other ingredients. Just for a few seconds. All right, now you'll see, if I can get this on camera, it's all foamy and that's what we want. All righty, I've got some ice in this shaker. We're gonna pour this in. It's a big drink. I'm going to do the shaky shaky. Here we go. Looking good so far. Now, you can have this over the rocks in an old fashioned glass, but you know us, we like our martini glasses. So I'm going to pull these down. I know, it's Christmas. Show's about Thanksgiving, but that's okay. I'm going to garnish with a couple of 
frozen cranberries. Not that you want to eat them, because they'll be very sour, but they're just fun to use. And now we're going to strain it. Look at that. Now this recipe, I believe, will be in the show notes. Yes, dear? It already is there. Okay. And that is for one drink, so I doubled it today on camera for you. All right. And the recipe is there, but this will be our episode uh, coming up this week. So we've decided, because the holidays are out there and people are really watching our channel, we'll put out our normal Tuesday episode, which we'll talk about later. We're going to put this cocktail out on Wednesday. Yeah. We'll put another cocktail out on Thursday and Friday. Because when you're done with the relatives, you may need it. <laughs> All right. Would you like me to deliver this to no, you? No, I'll coming come yet? to you. Oh, okay. Good. I like it when you come to me. It's just easier. All right. Happy Thanksgiving. Mmm. Oh, that Jack Daniels is really good. That's good. It's tart. You get the Jack Daniels, certainly. But it's bright. And, you know, you might be worried that the simple syrup makes it too sweet. But all that does is it helps the alcohol and the juices bind together. And along with the egg yolk. Or egg white, rather. So, All right, let's see who's cocktail. in the chat. We've got quite a few people. Let's just check in with everybody. Yep. Um... Here we go. Hello, gentlemen. I'm getting ready for work, but I'm listening in the background. You can buy egg whites in a carton that are pasteurized if you're really worried about it. Yes, Karen, that is true. And I was going to mention that, so thank you. Uh, we do that all the time, especially when we're up at camp and we make these for a big, big crowd. Having that carton of egg whites is just so much easier. All right, and our regular Hank is in. Sunny day with clear skies and 61 degrees here in Arizona, 1030. What is it here, dear? Like 35? It's 31 out right now. We got down to 20 last night. Yeah. Yep. And Kevin's here. The Hello, former Kevin. RV Kevin, who is now Kevin K7SW Ham Radio. And by the way, if you are into Ham Radio, you gotta go watch his channel. He's getting thousands of views. Awesome. Matter of fact, I'll put a link after the um, shows over to his channel for you. Is our Kevin in, I wonder, if no. they're watching yet? Oh. It's still 9 o'clock over in California. So. No, 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 our Kevin. Our oh, child I don't know, our son. wife and our granddaughter who watch. Suzanne, 30, sunny and 36 near Denver. Okay. Have you had snow yet in Colorado? We had, I think, a couple flurries in our first frost, but it was a very light frost. We haven't had a full proper frost yet. And Melissa's Melissa, greetings from Michigan with a high of 24 degrees. Looking forward to today's show. Thank you. Glad to see you, Melissa. All right, shall we get started? We have a lot to cover. I feel like you're looking real festive at the command center. Just wait. We're going to really... Uh... Yes, yes. And definitely a bottle of Jack is a great way to survive Thanksgiving. And we don't normally drink it except when we make whiskey sours. I don't know where this big bottle came from. I know we... Andy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Enough said. So our friend Enough Andy said. brought that. Oh, Kevin's here. Oh, good. Our Kevin. Yay! Mazel tov. All right. Before we start this, let okay. us... Hold on. Let me get me on screen here. Hi. There I am. So before we start this, let's give you the reason why we did this. We got a private message. Now, we get a lot of private messages in our Facebook group, and we love them. But this one gave us the idea to do the show, and you'll kind of see what this means. This is my first time hosting, and I'm terrified. Well, don't worry, Gina. I got you. May I get started now, dear? Yes, you may. Thank you. I'll even curtsy. Thank you. So I, I, we have a lot to cover today, but I'll keep it moving and keep you interested, I hope. So I've got some notes. Uh, and the spectacles on because I'm old. All right, so let's talk about Thanksgiving with your family, with a crowd. Let's say you're hosting. You need to stop and plan for the crowd. You need to make a plan if you haven't done it. Do it right now, do it today. And by that I mean sit down and 
figure out your menu, figure out your recipes, read through your recipes, figure out when things need to be started, how long they're going to take to cook, what temperature, and write all that down in a timeline so that you know, okay, I have to turn the oven on at 9 a.m. and I need to cook these things at 400, but these are done at 325 and etc. etc. Do that exercise ahead of time so that on Thanksgiving Day, you're not running around being crazy like a chicken with its head cut off and being super stressed because that's what we want to avoid is you being stressed because you're hosting or even if you're attending. So plan, plan for a crowd. Let's talk about guest list. I'm hoping that you all have your guest list already. I would think you would. Um, you, know, you, you know, everyone's coming over. Can people bring food? Are you comfortable with people bringing food? Personally, it depends on the guest for me. Um, I, I've had it where I, people have said, hey, can I bring blah, blah, blah? And I've said, sure, and then they don't come through. And then I'm left scrambling. We've been there. And there's a difference between relatives, family, and chosen family. Right, the biological versus the logical. Um, but, you know, yeah, if, if, if you trust that, you know, your Aunt Irene, she makes the best stuffing and she's going to bring extra so you don't have to worry about it, then let her bring it. Absolutely. She'll know how much to make or you can tell her, Aunt Irene, we've got 15 people here. Make enough. All right. And what about asking the guests to help? Now, some people say, sure, put your people to work. Put your family to work. And yes and no, um, because sometimes you don't want them to help. Sometimes you've got your your Zen going on in your kitchen, you know it needs to be done, you don't need someone coming in going, can I help, and getting in your way, and, and, but you can put them to work in other ways. You can say, okay, take this out and put it on the table, or put this on the buffet, or go make sure the water glasses are filled, go open the wine, things like that, to get them out of the way, or even better, you know, the game is on in the other room, why don't you go and watch the game, I got this covered. Or if you've got a cocktail already made, Right. Let your guests help themselves, or right. someone always wants to volunteer to be your bartender. Yeah, right. Get them out of your kitchen. So let your pesky brother-in-law be the bartender. Let him do it. It gets him out of your way. <laughs> Let's talk menu is next. Now, I know we all think, look at, well, it's turkey, duh. But it's a little more than that, usually. Um, appetizers. I say not too many and keep them light a big mistake people make every year is they do all of these apps there's hot apps there's cold apps and then everyone fills up on that oh for major should i have appetizers on thanksgiving day you know you can but keep it light do like a relish tray and i don't mean like hamburger relish i mean like a, a crudite you know celery sticks carrot sticks things like that something light just to nibble on Maybe one or two hot apps, but not too many. Do portion control. Keep your peeps hungry. You just want to whet their appetites. You don't want them filling up on all that and then not eating their dinner. Now, let's talk turkey. How Hold big? Hold on. Before you do that, there's a very important question okay. that just came in okay. just now. Okay. And you're going to cringe just a little bit. I'm cooking a 30 pound turkey. When should I take it out to thaw from Robin? Um, Robin, honey, uh, you should have taken that out a long time ago. So take it out today, but you're in trouble, girl. You may have to help it thaw by doing it in water, like in a cooler or even in the bathtub. Uh, yeah, because that's gonna take a long time to, to thaw. All right, so I'm the numbers guy. The general rule of thumb is when refrigerating a tur frozen turkey, excuse me, when thawing a Thawing. frozen turkey in the refrigerator, it takes five pounds a day. So a 30 pound turkey needs six days in your refrigerator to thaw. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you're not gonna quite make it ramen, but God bless you. You might want to consider going out today buying two smaller turkeys, buying two that are like 12 to 15 pounds, and then just thawing them. You'll have enough time to get them thawed. Which is something, a tip that I did last year, and I've learned, because I've done that too, where we've gotten giant, giant turkeys. They take forever to cook. 
They never cook thoroughly through. They're a pain in the neck. Last year, we had the entire family. We had 15 people, and I cooked two birds. I cooked two smaller ones, and they were perfect. And the instructions on the back of your bird will talk about how to defrost it by putting it in water, but even that can take a few days. And frankly, it's not preferred because you'll feel the outside and you'll think it's thawed, but the inside yeah. will still be yeah. frozen. All right, so that's how, so how big of a turkey do we need? And that's gonna depend on how many people you have. Uh, like, what did we say? What did we just say? A pound and a half of meat per person to plan on? Uh, yeah. We have oh, a chart somewhere. I had a chart, oh, I just didn't bring it up. Oh, that's all right. So I basically do plan on around a pound and a half of meat per person. You have to take into account that the turkey has bones uh, and allow, what did we say, like, to figure... All right, so let's let's clarify this. Yeah. It's a pound, the, the estimating method is a pound and a half per eating person. That doesn't mean they're going to eat a pound of food. They're going to get maybe half to three quarters. The pound and a half takes care mm -hmm. of the bone and okay, the yeah, cartilage you were saying, yeah. and the pieces that are not in there. So, for example, for nine people, you would need a 12 pound turkey. Right. For 10 people, you would need a 15 pound turkey and so on and so right. forth. The way you were saying to me earlier when we were going over this, you made me think like, oh, you need the meat and they need to account for the bones. And I thought, that doesn't sound right, but okay. But whatever. What you, what he just said. Uh, that's how big. And again, if you have you know, 25, 30 people cook multiple birds, it's so much easier. Or you could do a full size turkey and a turkey breast, which is also nice because then People usually prefer white meat over dark meat, and that gives them some extra. Let's pop in with chat here. Okay. So Melissa agrees. Yes, save your current frozen burger, get two smaller ones, absolutely. And you were talking about helping in the kitchen. My aunt's theory was if you had some three times or more, your family and could be recruited for chores. On the other hand, my daughter-in-law doesn't like extra people in her kitchen. Yes, yes, and and you know we kind of do that too. If you, uh, we t we tell people the first time you come to our house, you're our guest. We'll wait on you. Blah blah blah. After that, your family. The fridge is that way. The bar is that way. Help yourself, Teresa. I love a relish tray. Yeah, me too. It's just a nice little munchie, just to wet your appetite, just tickle that palate. Entertaining is all about the preps so that you can enjoy your guests. Love to hear your tips for entertaining. Thank you. And yes, you're absolutely right. It's so much easier when you do that prep work ahead of time. Absolutely. And Suzanne said it snowed twice in the last <gasps> week. Yay! I, I want snow this year. I mean, I don't so, ever leave uh, the house, so. Up in our area, Rochester, New York, which is about 100 miles north of here, they have six and a half feet of snow as of today. Good old Rochester Bears. Okay, so. We've talked about how big, and we've talked about when to thaw the turkey. Let's talk about cooking method. Are you gonna fry it? Are you going to roast it? Traditionally, you roast your turkey. And I really like it. You know, some people brine it first. I've done brines, I've done dry brines, I've done wet brines. Oh, I'm from Kay. How do you feel about fried turkey? Well, I like it once in a while. Um, we go to, every year, although I think we missed it this year. We did. Uh, we have it, we belong to a camping group and they do a Thanksgiving rally every year. Uh, that's like the last rally of the season. And they always do a bunch of fried turkeys and it, it's yeah, fun Yeah, they deep fry silly. six yeah. turkeys. We also deep fry them quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, but we actually don't do it for home, obviously. It's just two of us. Um, but we're, in, we're entertaining at our seasonal site in the mountains. We could have 20 or 30. You need to put yourself on camera more, dear. Oh, I thought I was. Oops, nope. I know. I hit the preview button. So I was here. There you Gotta are. Gotta hit the right yeah. buttons to make that so work. I like fried turkey, and like like Phil said, we'll do it up at camp, maybe when we're gonna do a, a turkey for a crowd, but uh, at home, not so much. We could, but uh, I'd rather just roast it. Remember that stomach can only hold so much, like eight to 11 ounces when thinking about apps and dinner. You're absolutely right, Hank. You're absolutely right. And that's why I say, keep the apps light. When I was growing up, my poor mom, it was always a stressful day for her. I think I have some PTSD from it, but she would, we would have to get really early, have a breakfast, but not too big of a breakfast, and then get the blank out of the kitchen. And she would start putting things out. We, we weren't allowed to have lunch because we would eat early, like two o'clock. So she'd start putting stuff out. 
and she put out celery sticks and mixed nuts and things. And then she's like, no, don't eat that. Don't fill up on it. Like, mom, <laughs> we're hungry. We're growing children. All right. Do you prefer the jellied or the whole cranberry sauce? I prefer the whole berry and I prefer to make my own, but I always keep a couple cans of each around just in case. Well, except our oldest daughter. Yeah. She actually wants it in the can because she likes the ridges. So you can cut perfect lines on the ridges. Uh -huh. And that's also her topping for the next day turkey sandwich. Yeah. All right. So cooking method, do you like to fry? We like to fry once in a while, but generally roasting is good. And I like that because the whole house smells like roast turkey and that's a good thing. It really is. Now, whether you brine it or use herbs or butter or whatever, there's hundreds and hundreds of recipes out there. We're probably going to do a turkey recipe, but not till after the holidays are over because we like having turkey year round and we prefer to have it, you know, like in the middle of February or April, you know, like, hey, it's nowhere near Thanksgiving, but let's have a Thanksgiving dinner right now. All right, so here's a problem that we've had to deal with. Gave up trying to cook for Thanksgiving. Everyone has dietary restrictions and I'm not cooking separate meals And Danielle. Yes, yes, I, I feel your pain, Danielle, I do. Um, we've had that ourselves, uh, but you know what? You can do it. You just gotta be a little creative with it. Uh, but yeah, you know, if you have 10 people and each one has a different need, well then sorry kids. Um, we need so to... we've done both. We've had a turkey and one year we had, had vegans to dinner. We had vegans and vegetarians. So we uh -huh. did a stuffed squash. Butternut squash. Um, with uh, all sorts of things in it and they loved it. Yep. And it wasn't that hard to do. Nope. And everyone uh, ate that mm -hmm. um, also yep. as, as their um, side dish. And for them, it was the primary meal. But. Okay. Back to me. Back to you, Bob. So. To stuff the bird or not to stuff the bird. What do you think, dear? Do you like it when we cook the stuffing in the bird? Or do you prefer it when I cook it outside? I do not like it in the bird. First, for two reasons. It makes a turkey take longer to cook because the stuffing has got to be cooked in the inside. Then you get a really dried out bird. Yeah. And the other advantage of doing separate dressings is you can make more than one type. True. Yep. You could have a cornbread type, you could have a regular type, and so on. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, that's our feeling, because I feel the same way. I usually do the stuffing outside of the bird, I guess, which is called dressing. But I, it's not that I don't put anything in the cavity. I put lots of herbs and, and fruits and things in, oranges and sage, and all those, some of those uh, Thanksgiving flavors that you think about. And that just helps perfume the bird and give it flavor. And it adds flavor to the drippings, which then become your gravy, which is a great, great thing. Let's talk sides next. The jelly needs to show the ribs from the can. Yes, Kevin, yes. All right, but actually we have somebody here who's jumping in and wants to skip. Oh, okay. From Aaron, what else can I serve for dessert besides pumpkin or apple pie? Okay, um, we can skip ahead briefly. Uh, I'm making pumpkin ice cream this year because I Phil bought me a very high-end ice cream maker several years ago, and I've only used it a few times because every time I get it out, he says, don't do all that work. And then he says, why don't you ever use that? So we're having pumpkin ice cream this year. And the reason is, because I'm, I'm on Noom, as I've mentioned, I can do good portion control and it only makes about a quart of ice cream. And we did an episode a few months ago about a pumpkin cheesecake yes. with ginger snap. That was my other thing. Uh, crust. Yep, you can do a pumpkin cheesecake. You can do any other type of dessert, really, that you want. You don't have to do just the traditional pumpkin pie. You can do whatever you want and start your own new tradition. Maybe if you don't like pumpkin, you can say, you know what? My tradition is I'm going to make a lemon meringue pie or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with store-bought. Now us living near Philadelphia, Southern Philadelphia is a huge Italian area. So they line up on Thanksgiving morning at the bakeries at six in the morning and pick yep. up their cannolis. Cannolis and other things. And other things for do. the day. And of course we have the, our Amish markets that uh, have wonderful pies too. But I, I, it's one time a year I will bake it. All right, let's talk about sides. 
Do you need all of the side dressings, all the side dishes rather? You know, there's mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, yams, Ooh. stuffing, rolls. Then there's the vegetables, the green bean casserole, the, the turnips, the squashes, all of it. Do you need it all? That's a trap that my mother used to fall into. And she would make, we would have to have mashed potatoes. But then my one brother wanted sweet potatoes, so there would be sweet potatoes. And then someone else wanted, uh, she never made that green bean casserole, um, but someone else wanted string beans. And then she always had to have turnips or rutabagas. And there was just too much. There's too many things going on. And of course you had to have a little bit of each one. So for me, I can see the, the mashed potatoes because you want the gravy. I can see, but I would do either mashed potatoes or the sweet potatoes. I, I rare, rarely have done both. I'd also rather, I will not give up the stuffing because that's the first side dish. That's what I go for. Dressing. Stuffing, dressing. So potato, Melissa has potato. a great idea for dressing. This is cool. Dressing outside, fun to roast dressing in a pot. OMG, Melissa, I am so going to do that. That's great. I am stealing that. You know, that may have to be an episode, dear. And we yeah. do that with our French onion soup. soup. Right. We actually serve it hot that inside a pumpkin. Great, Melissa. Thank you. That is and a great idea. And the onion soup gets the flavor of the pumpkin. Which then the, the dressing would do, too, from the pumpkin. Yeah, that is And then you can eat one. the pumpkin, too. That's great. So you get two and one. That's, oh, that's excellent. Hank says pecan pie. <laughs> we'll get to dessert. We will. So, you know, I, I don't think you need, especially if you're hosting, you don't need to do 75 sides. I would do, you know, do the stuffing, do maybe one other starch, whether it's mashed potatoes or sweet potatoes, do one of those, and then do a vegetable. Ideally, a green vegetable, so you have something green, but whatever you like. Um, you don't need to do 14 different vegetables, and then dinner rolls, and then this, and that, and then... And, and, because you want to keep, you know, you're entertaining. This is a big dinner party, essentially. And you want to take people on a journey, but you want to control that journey. And you don't want to have yourself stressed out and have every dish in the house dirty. And, and yeah, just... So I personally recommend toning down the side dishes, paring it down, and then make really, really good side dishes. Don't just boil some string beans, you know, saute them in some bacon drippings with shallots, uh, throw in some pomegranate seeds, you know, the, the mashed potatoes doing with buttermilk or sour cream. Speaking of mashed potatoes, Dear. we have a ton of questions on, okay. on mashed potatoes. Confession time. My mashed potatoes are either lumpy or thin soup from Karen. Well, Karen, I'm not sure what you're doing. Um, you know, to me, the thin soup is you're adding too much liquid, and maybe you're not letting the potatoes get all the way dried out before you start adding butter and, and milk and cream and things. Lumpy, you just got to... Some people like lumpy mashed potatoes. Uh, if you're doing it like with a, a hand mixer or a stand mixer, just let them mix go. And make sure they're cooked thoroughly. You know, sometimes it's, it's easy to not get potatoes cooked all the way through, and you're rushing, and then you have those hard little lumps in there. From Carl, I like a crab of mashed potatoes. Last year I piped shells of mash around the plate. More room for other sides instead of piles. That's great, and that's that's a beautiful idea, especially if you're doing it restaurant style, um, uh, in, in that you're gonna make up everyone's plates. That's Thank you, Carl, that's a great tip for people who wanna be extra creative. I would do that, absolutely. But yeah, I would just uh, pare down the sides and then make them extra special. Years ago, we went to a vegetarian friend's for Thanksgiving. My husband and son had me cook a turkey for us later to have at home. Well, <coughs> excuse me. I can understand that, Suzanne. Yeah, I probably would have done the same thing. Um, but I'll bet you had a good meal. And more importantly, you enjoyed spending the time with your friends. And that's, you know, really one of the things that Thanksgiving is all about. Let's all gather together around a table. Whether you're having turkey or a vegetarian meal or popcorn and candy, it doesn't matter. You're gathering together. I used the store salad bar like a sous chef. Everything I need to build salad and trays is chopped clean and ready to go from build. And that's another great idea. It might be a little more expensive that way, but if, if you're not comfortable doing all the prep, then yeah, that is a great option. Uh, that's something my mother used to do uh, when it was we were all out of the house. It was just she and my dad. She would often do that. 
All right, moving on. Now, we talked about cranberry sauce. Do you like the can or do you like homemade? I per personally prefer homemade, but like I said, I always keep the can around. Now, I have to admit, I don't have my own recipe for cranberry sauce. I know you're probably shocked, uh, but I really like Trisha Yearwood's uh, recipe for, cran she calls it cranberry conserve, and I like it because it has bourbon in it. And yes, last year, if any of the kids ate the cranberry conserve, they had bourbon, so that's just a little bit. This is one time a year I sharpen all my knives from a net. Yeah, that's a great, great tip too, is make sure your knives are really, really sharp. Do that way ahead of time. Don't do it the day of, uh, but do it ahead of time. All right, now, dessert. We start talking about it, let's move to that. So are pies our only options? Absolutely not. So Karen, I always serve pecan pie and a Kentucky butter cake along with pumpkin pie. Yeah, mm. pecan pie is, is very traditional too, but a Kentucky butter cake, Karen, that sounds really interesting. I hope you have that. If you have that on your, I'm gonna go look later because I think I may need to get that. I love a butter cake. Karen, is that a recipe on your site? Because I need to search for that. Yeah. That's what I was trying to ask. We always have pumpkin something. Yes, yes, we saw that dear. Okay. Not this one. Yes, we did. Years ago, we went to a vegetarian French. Yeah, I talked about that already. Okay. Yep. You're getting your buttons mixed up. Yes, oh, I Kevin, am. Okay, green bean casserole, mashed potato stuffing, and bread. Need to make the mashed potato sandwiches. No, no, Kevin, that is not allowed. That is illegal in all 50 states. Uh, and every planet in the United Federation of Planets. Mashed no, potato I'm with sandwiches. You just remember are bad. that is uh, Michelle's and my two o'clock in the morning bad. thing. It's still bad. Just saying. It's still bad and icky. You know, green bean casserole is one of those things that I want to conquer. I've had it and it's usually been made poorly, but I like the idea of all the flavors together. I mean, I like green beans and mushrooms together. So it's something that, and every year I say, I need to make this from scratch and figure it out. Um, personally, I, I rarely serve bread with Thanksgiving. Now, I did last year because Phil's family are all carboholics, and I actually made bread from scratch. I made my PD bread. Um, and yeah, they have this weird tradition where they make cold mashed potato sandwiches or leftover mashed potato sandwiches, or even after we're sitting at the table, everyone's full. Phil and his daughter, his oldest daughter, and their, his son are sitting there making potato sandwiches. I fail to see the problem. Yes. And if you want to make it worse, you have it with Wawa low-fat chocolate milk. Just saying. But we didn't have any of that in the house. Okay, it's my time. Um, it, it's not yet, because you keep distracting me. <laughs> so you're gonna have to wait a few minutes. So stop with the questions. Let me get my spiel out here. So we talked about desserts. You can have whatever you want, really. Pumpkin pie is, of course, traditional. Now, how are you going to serve this, especially if you have a crowd? Are you going to do a buffet? Are you going to do it family style? I think that depends on how many people you have. Now, last year we had 15, so we did a buffet style. And I'm not a big one for buffets, but in that case, it was the most logical thing to do, and it made things a lot easier. The other thing is seating. You want to have a seating chart because you know what? Maybe great aunt Irene doesn't need to sit next door next to your kooky cousin who's in town, who's a hippie and, and crazy. And, and maybe your mother-in-law can't stand your sister. So you don't need to have them sitting next to each other. My mom gets really creative. She uses childhood photos instead of name cards. We all get a great laugh. Oh, that's a fun tip. Yeah. And that's the way you can do your seating assignments. And that's a great way to do it. So let's also talk about the table setting. Now my one rule, and I see this online every year and it, it, it hurts me. Paper plates, paper plates, come on. Even if you're having 30 people, I think it's better to have a bunch of mis mismatched plates, even if you buy them at the dollar store than having paper plates. You know, it's a holiday. Or styrofoam plates. Or styrofoam plates, especially styrofoam plates. You know, make the extra effort. It's a holiday. It's, it's, it's a day where we are thankful for what we have. 
we want to really celebrate, so make the effort. And, you know, something my mother never did. She had all this beautiful china, and we never used it because she said, oh, I have to pull it out of the cabinet, and I have to wash it. And Okay, you've got five teenagers at home. We can all wash the dishes for you because we want to use the good stuff that you have sitting in a cabinet, but she never would. Uh, so, yeah, make the effort this one day of year, maybe at Christmas too. Pull, you know, pull the stuff out, wash it, and use it. It's just going to make the whole thing better. My biggest issue is timing everything to get done at the same time from Barb. Well, and that's why now you should be looking at your recipes, looking at how long things to take, and you work backwards. Okay, we want to sit down at 6, so this has to be ready by then. That's going to take a half hour, and this has to be, and you work it out that way. Okay, now, that's what I'm saying, know your menus and write a timeline. When does the turkey need to go in the oven? What temperature do other things need to do? And make as much in advance as you can. You know, there's a lot of things you can do. You can make the pies the night before. Sometimes you can make the gravy before, and then you supplement it with some of the turkey dri dri drippings, rather. Also, keep that menu and that guest list from year to year, and keep an idea keep notes of what works and what didn't. So like last year, I burned the stuffing because I wasn't paying attention. So I put that in my notes so that the next time we host Thanksgiving, I won't burn the stuffing. Queen of make ahead here, I made the gravy cranberry sauce dressing and a table a few, dress, uh, set the table a few days before. Yeah, you know, do as much as you can ahead of time. That makes it easier. We can't set the table ahead of time because we have five cats, but. All right, dear. That's the end of my first part. So off to you and your Hold part. Hold on. I just want to catch up a few people in chat. All right. Hank says, homemade green beans. Better than dump it all from can. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. You can get fresh green beans in all the stores this time of year still. And so much better than dump it from a can. I agree 100%. We're having Brussels sprouts, but. So actually, this just gave me a good idea. No, for some reason, I haven't done a video yet, but I need to. Yes, please, Karen. Absolutely. That sounds delicious. I think actually even more fun is we could set this up on a live stream and split screen and you and Karen can make it together. Your own takes on it. That might be fun. We'll have to talk to you about that. Yeah, I'm up for it. All right. So it's back to me, huh? Yes. Dear. Okay. So hold on. Let me get my right screens correctly ready before we go. And super source. All right. All right, as most of you know, I spend a lot of time going to channels, small channels, and supporting them and giving them likes and leaving comments because that's important. And normally we feature one new one each live stream. Today, what I want to do is just quickly show all the ones that we've covered before. Why? Because Now's a great time with the holidays coming up and the weekends yeah. to go visit these channels, find some recipes. In the description below is the link to every one of these channels. And it starts out with Karen of In the Kitchen with Karen, who's actually in the chat. Yep. And she does videos every three days. We can't keep that cadence, but she can. And they're just lots of fun. They are. And she's all over. I have our friends Mitch and Philip who do a live stream every Tuesday. They're in San Francisco time. Yeah. Um, and they're a bunch of fun and they have some great chat. If you are a non drinker, they make great faux drinks. If you're trying to eat more healthy, they're just doing a whole series. Now, right now, Mitch and Philip are running a special uh, cookie extravaganza with about 20 other channels. And once we figure out what we're doing, yeah. I know what I'm doing. I got we'll it. We'll be there. And we have Daniela from Black Cat Kitchen. And of course, we're kind of like her because we have multiple black cats. We have three of the five. And Daniela is in England right now, but she comes from Canada. And she makes great stuff, great dessert recipes, all sorts of things. Then we have our friend over at Uncle Bill's Kitchen. He's great. And he's, he's just a lot of fun. Uh-huh. And he shows very, very detailed steps on how to prep. And his recipes are all over the place, from Taiwanese to Asian to you name it. And he's yeah. just a lot of fun. So go check some of him out. 
we have Stephanie from Ginger Snap Kitchen, who makes lots of desserts. Now, baking is kind of a challenge for us, and we're both diabetics, so therefore, we, we don't, don't get much. to make stuff very often. But that doesn't mean we can't come down here and find some good stuff. We've got Stephen and Jacqueline. So they make great Caribbean foods, Tobago, all sorts of stuff. I am dying for their teriyaki wings that I just watched and I want to make them. Or you want me to make them? Yes. We have Susan from Rhubarb and Cod, and Susan makes the most cinematic videos I've yeah. ever seen. Um, they are just amazing. It's like watching a Dreamcast movie. They are just so beautiful on how they're done. I'd love to see your face a bit more, but they are really great. And Susan has everything all over the place. Lots of pies and tray bakes and all sorts of things. And she has a series called Overthinking. So these are recipes that people overthink yeah. and overcomplicate when they could just be so much easier. And the last one is the one we featured last week, which is Christy Time. She is a cook. She's also a camper. They have a yeah. truck camper and they go all over the place. Now she's not such a little channel anymore. In fact, she's up to 22,000 when she was only 5,000 a year ago. So yay, Christy. But please, go visit so, these people. Yeah, and you know, all of us have our own little various different recipes, but we all have our own tips and tricks too. So if you're hosting Thanksgiving or anything, you just need, need some information, check, check out some of these channels. It's back to me now? It's back to you. And we got hey. lots of people typing in tips here. All right. Do I need to pause so we can share them? or Yeah, hold just... on. This is okay. a good one. We've done this one. My tip is to use a thermal coffee pot as a gravy warmer and server or stays hot and has less spillage on the table. Oh, yeah, we've done that. Absolutely. It's also a great way to keep soups warm if you're doing a soup course uh, and you want to keep that warm and not boiling on the stove. Pour it in the, in the carafe. Absolutely. That's a great tip. Mm-hmm. Oh, of course. Here we go. Are you itching for an invitation? Does that mean that wings are for dinner tonight? No, I think we're having pork chops. I, I accidentally bought a giant package of pork chops last night. And I Oops. think your dad Wrong wants... Wrong super source. Oh. Yeah, think, you can have them. You have to bring them. That's all. I think your dad wants breaded fried pork chops. Yeah, and the problem with that is what? Am I cooking for two or five? That's the question. May I go now? Yes, you may. Yay. <laughs> all right. So that's all about surviving with your family, with a crowd, getting through that day. My family was all about football that day as much as I hate it. It keeps them out of the kitchen and under foot. Yes, Bobby, exactly it does. And uh, I'm the same way. Last year we sent, uh, I think our son-in-law and our son and our other son-in-law were all football. We sent them down here to the rec room. Like, go watch down there. Leave us alone. Actually, we put up Xbox, and they had an Xbox. Was oh, that what it was? I know we sent them all down here, and they were all down here for a while. And this is also where the bar is, so who wouldn't want to be down here? Xbox, football, the bar. Sure. Oh, here's my favorite subject. We've had this one. I'm the king of this one. Holly's tend to get heated conversations about politics. How do you prevent it? Aha! Phil and I have a great rule. Do you want to tell them or do you want me to? You can do it. All right. So we have a rule. There is no discussion about the three G's. Guns, God, and government. If you start talking about that, you get one warning and then you're asked to leave. And I don't care if it's Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever. You get one warning. And other than that, take it outside. Get out of my house. This is not what today is about. You have every right to your opinions. That's what makes us a great country, but you don't have to express them all the time. And Thanksgiving Day, when we're all together, let's just be together. Let's not argue, right? I mean, why make it stressful? Just take and it away. And that 3G rule applies to everything in this house. If you're yep. invited for a single cocktail, we're yep. not going to discuss the 3Gs. Right. We're here to talk about you and us, right. not those right. items. And there's so much more to talk about. And I've been the big meanie who's more yep. than once asked a guest to leave. Yep. Yeah, we have. So that's how you can prevent that. And, you know, they may think you're a jerk, but it's your house. So you can be a jerk uh -oh. in your house. Oh, what now? I think Hank's going to have fighting words for this one. <laughs> 
Death to the green bean casserole. Sorry, Grandma from Jill. <laughs> right, but me. then Hank has an answer to that too. <coughs> oh. Yep. Homemade green beans better than dump it. Yeah, we saw that already, dear. He said that earlier. Kind of duping me here. But yes, you know, make it refresh. Best organization tip is a cooler. Get all the small stuff you need out of the fridge and leave more room for trays. That's a good idea, especially if you have a good cooler. And I like using those little freezy gel things instead of dumping ice in because what happens, the ice starts to melt, your stuff in the cooler gets waterlogged unless it's in like plastic containers and even then sometimes it does. And I think uh, they last a little longer. Or ice in a Ziploc bag to keep it from melting and waterlogging everything. I use my crock pot as a mashed potato keeper. Add some cream and potatoes, then set the temp on low stir every so often. Okay, that's a good idea. Sure, you can make them in the morning, keep them low and slow in the crock pot. That's a good idea. And then maybe at the end of the day before you serve, yeah, if you need to, add some cream or butter and give it another good stir. That's a good tip. You done? <laughs> nope. Uh, here's more on the political discussion thing. Uh -oh. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Hmm. I could have sworn I typed that in. Oh, well. Read it. Survival tip for discussions. Don't be that person that discusses weight loss and weight gain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've had that too, where people, family, uh, biological family who have no filter because, well, I'm your, I'm your auntie. I can say whatever I want to you. If walking, you go, oh, you've put on weight. Oh, girl, yeah. did you notice how much weight she put on? Yeah. Yes. Thank you, because I didn't know that I put on weight. Thank you for that. Now, if you say, have you lost weight, or you look like you lost weight, that's good, but you never say someone. From Jack, fun fact. Philadelphia's at home, the oldest Thanksgiving parade. Yeah, that's true, and, and we usually have it on when we're cooking and, and doing the whole day. It is fun to watch. May I please go now? Mm -hmm. Okay, how are we doing on time anyway? Uh, you got about 10 minutes. Oh, well then, yeah, I need to go. <laughs> All right, so we've talked about doing Thanksgiving with your family in a crowd and surviving and, uh, you know, uh, whiskey sour might help. But what about when it's just one or two of you? Uh, sometimes people get very depressed and sad when it's like just the two of us. I love it, and Phil does too. Like this year, it's just the two of us. We love our family, we love all of our kids, we loved the chaos last year, but this year we're looking forward to uh, having just an us day. And, and that doesn't mean that we're not gonna celebrate, we're not gonna have a very nice feast. I'm scaling it down. So I'm gonna make extra effort, but just for the two of us. So for example, I'm gonna do things like, I'm gonna pull a leaf out of the dining room table, make it smaller. I'm gonna set us a beautiful table. And I know it seems silly just for the two of us, but why not make it special? It's a special day. We'll have candles and flowers and all of that silliness. And I have a really nice menu, I think, planned. Um, should I tell them our menu? Oh, any suggestions for keeping food warm if you have only one oven and live in, okay. Small space, I would assume oh. that means. So what most people don't know is that drawer underneath your oven, uh, if you have like a standard range, that's actually not to keep your sheet pans in, that's a warming drawer. You can keep things warm in there. Um, also, if you have those insulated bags uh, that you use like when you buy frozen stuff at a warehouse store and you have a lot of other shopping, those will insulate and keep things warm, as will a cooler. A cooler is hot and cold, and that will also help keep things warm. So don't fill all your coolers with ice. You could also use a buffet serving trays with a sterner yep. underneath it. Yep. You can actually, so we've actually set them up, put them on the garage floor, Yeah. taken the, the items we wanna keep warm, put them in a foil, put them out there, it works perfect, yep. and yep. it's really inexpensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what about when it's just for two of you? Yeah. So, you know, be creative is my big thing. Uh, you don't have to cook a great big huge turkey. 
So for me, we're going to have Cornish game hens, but that's not all we're having. We're going to start off with some champagne and oysters on the half shell because we love them. And we only have them maybe twice a year. And we'll have them, assuming I remember to order them tomorrow. I got to practice my shucking skills again. Yeah, maybe you need to remind me to order them tomorrow. Uh, if I can't get them for some reason, then I'll figure out something else. You know, there's always shrimp, there's mussels, but we're going to have some sort of nice seafood starter. Uh, and we'll just make it a little extra special. We're going to have Cornish game hens. But if you don't like Cornish game hens, just make something else. Another thing to keep food warm is a crock pot, toaster, oven, hot plate, etc. Absolutely, Hank. Yep. But it's all about when it's just two of you being creative and making that effort. Um, you know, we're going to do, what else are we having? Where's my menu? Game hens, you could do, you could do chicken breasts, you could do a small ham, you could do a small roast beef. You don't have to have turkey either. That's the other thing. Everyone thinks, oh my gosh, you have to have turkey. You don't. Because at the first Thanksgiving, they, turkey was probably on the menu, but it was not the main event. Uh, there was a lot of seafood, there was venison. So you can have, there are rabbits and, and everything else, so you can have whatever you want. It's really about sitting down, spending the time together, making the effort. The best part of surviving the day is leftovers I can consume in private tomorrow. Well, yeah, and the Thanksgiving leftovers are always a fun thing. Absolutely. I'm getting my mashed potato sandwiches, period. Okay, then you're going to have to go over to Kevin's house or Michelle's house because we're having stuffing. We're not having mashed potatoes. So you can have a stuffing sandwich. If you're very, very nice to me, I will make PD bread. I will make bread from scratch for you, dear. But we're not having mashed potatoes. We're having stuffing. I Debbie's have got a good one. I have decided the best help I can get for the holidays is Valium. <laughs> Well, okay, you know, I don't know what to say to that. If that works for you. <laughs> and um, how is that any different from the multiple cocktails we have to have for family? We didn't drink last year. We didn't drink much last year. We were too busy to drink last year. Though I still have wine for a certain family members. All right, so this is a great request. It's, I just copied it out of Facebook. Okay. Uh, and this is really cool. We really should do this. Oh, I love all the emojis. Make sure everyone here takes a picture of their table, bird, or side dishes and posts it in the Facebook group from Yolanda. Yes, that's a great idea. Actually, we should do that. Yeah. Because people can post to our Facebook wall. Right, they right? just can't post, they can't post pictures to YouTube but they can post them in Facebook, right. so in a wall. Find us on Facebook, Our follow us on Facebook, Let's Celebrate TV, we've got a page, and we have quite a number of followers, actually. So yeah, if you haven't found us, find us. Um, I know Uncle Bill's Kitchen, Uncle Bill follows us. I think some of the others who are here. So yeah, absolutely. Or when in That's doubt, just idea. send an send email it, yeah, to and, us. And we can post it And too. we'll post it yep. for you. Absolutely. As yeah. we do for a lot of this. Or you can contact us through the website, and we can also take care of that. Yeah. That's a great idea. So these live streams are kind of a mix because so almost most of my people are watching this mm -hmm. live on YouTube. We can do chat. We just started broadcasting to Facebook. That should happen next week. So we'll be simultaneous. But we don't have a way of getting the comments in from Facebook. Right. So they usually come in as uh, direct messages and I copy and paste them off the screen. Mm -hmm. And yes, Kevin, we're having fried mashed potatoes, or fried mashed potatoes, fried pork chops, and mashed potatoes and gravy tonight for dinner. I don't want Thanksgiving. I'm canceling the live stream. <laughs> I'm Cody. Welcome, Cody. You're new. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, I run hot and cold with Thanksgiving. Like I said earlier, I have a little PTSD, I guess, from it because my mother was always stressed out. And I've had Thanksgiving successes. I've had Thanksgiving fails. Uh, but I'm trying to get more into it. It is always the kickoff of the Christmas season, which I love too. Um, extra refrigeration in the garage is excellent for the holidays. Absolutely. And if you live in a cold climate, outside is a good way to have that extra refrigeration. Yeah, but put yeah. it on the porch. Yep. Yep. 
And that's something else to consider. Do you have enough room in your fridge uh, for all the food that you're going to buy? But we talked about using coolers earlier, too, if we don't have a second fridge. We just bought a new fridge <sighs> that I wasn't planning on buying, but we kind of had to. So we have lots of room for... Because the, the first fridge we had in this house was counter death because we thought, oh, we don't need it. It's just two of us. And for seven years, we've hated that darn fridge. And then it started failing and we were like, crap, we can't afford a new fridge right now. And $4,000 later. <sighs> and we paid 4000 for the first one, which kind of ticks me off. So that's what high-end fridges cost. And Okay. Now we have full size and lots of room, so I guess I should be cooking. So we're more. getting to the end. So I want you to talk about what you're working on, what the episodes are coming up on, and what our next live stream is, because it should be really fun. I don't remember what we said, remembered, what we decided. So what are we working on? Today we're filming. So uh, Kevin and Emily, we need to film two episodes before you guys come to dinner today. We're filming The Whiskey Sour which is going to be a cocktail episode coming up really fast. We are filming uh, a dish that you may want to have as a side dish for Thanksgiving. We're filming my version of succotash, and it's not just lima beans and corn. It's a little extra, and it's delicious. And we're going to link it to the episode for the hot bacon dressing because we discovered the hot bacon dressing on this sa uh, succotash is, is like mind-blowingly delicious. Um, what else are we working on? We're going to be filming over Thanksgiving weekend, the final in the series of Mother Sauces, Sauce Espanol. Uh, and that's the most, not complicated one, but it has more steps. A uh, little more than the tomato sauce one that we did. Holiday cookie martini? Yes, we have the holiday cookie martini coming out. That'll that's be Friday. already filmed, so that'll be Friday. Um, and that will help you get you through Christmas. So... Our next live stream is in two weeks. And what did we decide? I forget what we decided. It was Dinner for one. Oh, that's right. Cooking for one. Because we get so many requests out there and, and people saying, I, I love your channel, but it's just me and I don't cook and I am sad. And, and we, we have a friend who, who's single. He lives in New York City and he said, I've never cooked. I've lived in, in Manhattan for 40 years and I don't have a stove in my kitchen anymore because I don't cook. So they took it out and I just go out to eat. And I thought, that's kind of sad. So I want to talk about cooking for one or even cooking for two, the smaller amounts. So many people struggle when they become empty, empty nesters. Uh, how can I, I'm used to cooking for a family of six and now I'm cooking for just two of us or one of us. So we're going to talk about that. And then the live stream after that is going to all be about Christmas and, and fun things and cookies. We have a cookie episode coming out too. That's going to be part of the one that Mitch and Philip mentioned. Yep. We're working that out. We're checking with our other people like Daniela and yep. all the others to make sure that we're not yeah. duplicating what they're doing. So I'm thinking, I'm considering my cranberry orange biscotti. It's not true biscotti because you only bake it once. You can bake it twice, but... I made a mistake one year and only baked it once, and uh, wow, was it delicious. So we may do that. All right. So how are we doing on time now, dear? It's time to wrap up. Oh, so from the two fun. of us, and I still have a little cocktail left. Not me. Oh, okay. Sorry. Well, yeah, no, it's done. So All we right. shall see you in two weeks for dinner for one. Yep. And as a reminder, our episode's on Tuesday. For our full episodes, Friday is either cocktails or basic or skills. Basic skills. So we've been late a few times, and every other Sunday uh, for our live streams, um, we are considering moving our live streams after the first of the year to a later time, to three o'clock. Our West Coast people, like Karen and a whole bunch of others, that's nine thirty in the morning for them. They're having a little trouble, and our UK audience, which is pretty big. That's 6 yeah. o'clock. That's for dinner for them. So we are considering changing to 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, that also helps the people go to church. So we might get a few more extra people in. Yeah, that's a big thing we've had people say. I get home from church and I miss your live stream. And we may start doing more of them. Great intel interchange and a lot of things to think about. Thank you, Hank. All right. So for right. the two of us, we right. will we'll see, see you next you. time. And we'll be in chat for another minute in case you've got ideas yep. uh, for our next time.